Hi, my name is Gautam Narayan. I am a scientist at the Space Telescope Institute in Baltimore, Maryland, and I work on things that blow up in the night sky. So I'm part of the LSST Dark Energy Science Collaboration and the LSST Transient and Variable Science Group. I'm Rahul Biswas. Uh, I'm at the Oscar Klein Center at Stockholm University. And I'm also part of the Dark Energy Science Collaboration, where I mostly work on the Supernova Working Group, Supernova Cosmology Working Group. And I'm also interested in transients and variable sciences. We've been designing a project that essentially spans these two groups, but also interestingly involves the general public. And we call this project uh, the absolutely horrible acronym PLASTIC. It stands for Photometric Ellicity Astronomical Time Series Classification Challenge. Neither of us had anything to do with that acronym. Um, the idea is that we simulate a whole bunch of realistic events that LSST will see in the time domain sky. And we've been doing this sort of thing for a while, of course, and astronomers look for these kinds of events and try to classify them. But the key difference between plastic and anything else is that this challenge is open to the public. So anybody at all can contribute their classifications and win prizes. Uh, so this is really an, an attempt at engaging the broader community uh, with the LSST project and they can have a real uh, say in how the project does science in a few years from now. Uh, we're partnering with a company called Kaggle which is run by Google and this challenge will be hosted on that platform and it is a really incredible opportunity for people to get involved with the project because the outcome of this challenge will really define a lot of how we choose to do science within our two science collaborations. The sort of data we have here is, as you might see in some of the LSST project slides, we take data in several filters or bands or colors, however you want to phrase that, and we'll have a time series in each of these colors. So you have a catalog of objects, and for each of these objects, you have this kind of time series. And what you're supposed to tell us is which class the particular, uh, a particular object and time series are coming from. There's going to be a metric which will decide how good your classifications are. And uh, based on that, you can figure out whether you're doing well or not. Now to build all of this infrastructure, to simulate the time domain sky and all of these different classes of objects that we just didn't really have in the past, has taken a huge amount of work from a large group of people spread around the world. This is one of the characteristics of LSST. It's a big project that's very globally dispersed. We have been active every single day and actually exploiting the fact that we're in different time zones. Uh, so there's been times in our project where, for example, Rahul will ask a question in the morning uh, Emily Shida, who's one of the uh, project leads in France, takes that up. She sends that to maybe me, Dai, who's a postdoc at New Jersey. Uh, I was in Colorado and I picked up on me's thread and carried on the work at that time three hours later. And when it was time for me to go to bed, Kara Ponder, another postdoc, picked up the work for me and took care of that. And that moved on to Luis Galbani in Australia, uh, who was there at the time. So it's really been a uh, allowed us to essentially pass the parcel and keep working around the clock uh, and exploit the fact that this really is a global collaboration and we have so much expertise around the world. So I think one of the really important stages was collecting these models because each of us have particular specializations but none of us actually know all of the transient models that might be useful. So. Rick Kessler, Rene Loge got together. There was a call to many people and a lot of people did respond. It was a lot of work getting the models in, understanding what rates they should be in. And then there's a very large group of people doing this. There were a set of people who were focused on determining what the metric should be. And now the challenge is basically ready to go out. Right. The first version of the challenge will begin in mid-September and run until mid-December. Uh, the results will be out in early January and we'll have a press release at the AAS meeting, the American Astronomical Society meeting in Seattle uh, early next year. 
this is just the first iteration of this challenge. We're not gonna simply stop and say, well, we know everything now. There are, if you're an astronomer watching this, there are many classes of models we don't yet have. So please, please contribute us, uh, contribute these things if you have them, contact us and we'll let you know how to get involved. Uh, and our models and our simulations are going to get more and more complicated with time, uh, reflecting w our growing knowledge about LSST as we get closer and closer to the start of survey operations. Uh, we hope that the next uh, iteration, we won't be simulating just time series, we'll be actually simulating the images, for example, that go with these things. Uh, and so this will make it a much more realistic challenge uh, and will have a much, much uh, more powerful impact on, on the science that actually works out. And I think that's the key aspect about plastic. This is one of the few areas in which the public really will have an influence on what science we do with LSST. Uh, so it really is just an amazingly different way of doing things. I hope other science collaborations in LSST uh, will follow this kind of lead and start doing more and more of their projects in the same way and trying to incorporate more of the expertise that's out there. Because, you know, while we are studying the universe, we don't understand all of it yet. Uh, we want to get there, but we need your help.